of thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, that is vouchsafed to give joy to the whole world. Grant, we beseech thee, that through his mother, the Virgin Mary, we may obtain the joys of everlasting life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In nomine Patris et Filii, Spiritus Sancti, Amen. In tuoi volatari Dei, e nel Filippi di Gaggiun, tu con Eum. Glorica me Dei, Sergio Nacato, Membre Gente, non sancta, non homine, nel conto rosso, Lord. Quetus Deus, Fondum, Mare, Quarvia, Felicis, Qualis Christis, in Cento, come Filio Mei, Nico. Tem de lutem de onde vetatum tuum, nisse me de luxe onde produzerum de mortum sanctum tuum, de tabana alta da tua, et in tuoi volatari te, e de in filipi di gaiun, tu con eum. Cote te cubi vincitur a Deus, Deus meus, qual tristes anima me, ad equalitum tuas me, sferio Deo quando et hoc obite cui, salutari putus me, et Deus meus. Gloria, Patria, Filio, Spiritu e Santo, si coderat in principio e non te tempe, et in secula seculorum. Amen. In tuoi volatari te, ed in Filippi di Gaiun, tu con eum. Augi cor in nostri, in domine domini, qui feci cielum et terra. Quam fiti od emi potenti via, tu maria sentis, mi via, tu tania tiam, tu via, tu ai matrice, sancti potus, petus, paus, via, tu ai maria, tu ia, tu non tu sangi, tu vis rape. Qui od a mi scogitazione, me vota offre, me o culpa, me o culpa, me o maxima culpa. E io prego, beata madre, un cielo divino, mi dà tanto karma, tanto non beato, mi vada matrice, Santos vossos petus, Paolo, beato mio Anna Maria, piano, amen, santos vos fratres, orrai con me, donna del nostro. E di beato figli, che te mi seguiti, qui sfutati chi, che mi te preti, che non t'anno. Ah, quam fiti, o Deo, omnipotenti, beate Maria, senti vivi, mi inquiati, mi cani, a tanto no, beato Ioane, Battista, santi che posti di spettus, Paolo, omnibus, santi, se ti vi fate, Qui è votato in mis cogitazione, bevo e favore. Meo culpa, meo culpa, mea maxima culpa. E io prego, beata Maria, un cielo divino, e beata mi cari, ma tanto, beato mio anno Battista, santo se posso rispetto, e Paolo, omne santo se te fate, orrare con me, ad omnum del nostro. E se vi dato vesci, mi potem se usi, qui sfutati vesci, spedute e vostre vite me tana, Amen. In urgenzia, ma su Sione, ma su Sione, per ritorno a Sole, in chi riguarda non vi sarebbe potente di terre che sovis. Amen. Deus tu pudas e tutte vita abisnas, e plem sole et habit orite. Ostendi nobis dame misericordia tua, et tramitare tuum da nobis. Domine exaltazione mea, et clamo me se te degna. Domino soviscum, et cum spirito tuo. Alleluia. Prote existi me Deus e conventum aninantium, alleluia. A multitudine opere ansi iniquitate, alleluia, alleluia. Exaudi Deus, razione meam, cum deprecor, ad imorri nemici e arripi me anima mea. Gloria, Patri, Figlio e Spiritui Santo, sicu derat in principio e nunc et sempre, ed in secula seculorum, amen. Prote existi me Deus e conventum aninantium, alleluia. A multitudine opere ansi iniquitate, Alleluia, alleluia. Kiri eleison, kiri eleison, kiri eleison. Christa eleison, Christa eleison, Christa eleison. Kiri eleison, kiri eleison, kiri eleison. Gloria in excelsis Deo, et in terra pax ominibus vore voluntatis, laudamus te, benedicimus te, adoramus te, glorificamus te, gracis agimus divi prote, mandum gloriam tuam, 
Domine Deus, Rex Celestis, Deus Pater Omnipotens, Domine Filio Unigenita e Gaisu Christe, Domine Deus, Anus Dei, Filius Patris, qui tolis peccato mundi, miserere nobis, qui tolis peccato mundi, suscita e deprecazione nostra, qui se ne sedex eram patris, miserere nobis. Quodiam tu solus sanctus, tu solus dominus, tu solus altissimus, Gesù Christe, con sancto spirito in gloria dei patris. Amen. Ex abobis et cum spirito tu, ordemus. Presta faesmus onnipotens Deus, ut viazzi petri martiris, tui fidem conclua devotione septemur, Qui pro iustem filie in dilazione, martirii pavum eruit optimere. Per Domino nostrum, Iaesum Christum, filium tuum, e tecum lumina regno ad umanitati, sicus sancti Dei, per Romia secula seculorum. Amen. Orde Deus. Deus, cui nostri azi di oggi martiris, tui meritis et intercessione legificas, concede propitius, ut qui tua perre e beneficie poscimus, dono tua grazia e contequamur. Per Domino nostro, via e sum Christum, filium tuum, e te cum vivida regna ad umanitatis e ritus sancti Deus, per Romia secula seculorum. Amen. Lexeo, di et pistoli, piazzi Paoli Apostoli e Timotei. Verissime, memo resto Domino, via e sum Christum, resurisis, e a mortuis ex semene David, secundum Evangelium meu, in collaborum usque vincula, quasi male operans, se verbum dei non est allegatum. Ideo homine sustinio fronte de lectos, ut ei dixi salutem gote quantur, quae est in Christo Iesu, cum gloria celesti. Tu autum esecutus es meam doctrinam institutionem propositum fidem nominamitatem, dilexionem patientiam persecutionem passiones, quali amici factus ut adiopie e conie distrit, quali persecutionis sustinuit, et ex omnibus ebriquit me dominus, et omnes qui fie volunt vivere in Christo Iesu persecutionem pazientur. Deo gratia. Alleluia, alleluia, confite punto cei meravilia tua domine, et in veritatem tua meneclesia sanctorum. Alleluia. Possuisti domine super capo teus coronam de lapide prezioso. Alleluia. Dominus Obispum, et cum Spirito Tuo, sequenzi e santi Evangelii secundum Iovannem, Gloria, Tivi Domine. In ino tempore dixi di Eisus discipli suis, ego sum vitis vera et pater meus ad vicore eis, omnem palmi temi me non ferentem fructum coliteum, et omnem qui fret fructum cum habitaem, et fructum plus deferat. Iam vos mundi estis prote semonium quenum putus un vobis, manete in me et ego in vobis. Si cur palmes non potes fere fructum est emit ipso, nisi manserit in vite, sic nec vos nisi in me manseritis. Ego sum vitis, vos palmites, qui manit in me et ego in eio, tic fet fructum multum, qui es sine me nihil grotestis facile. Si qui si me non manserit, mi te cur fore si cur palmes et eresced, et coligum deum, et in linea me tentet ardet. Si manseritis in me et verba me in vobis manserit, quod cumque volu eritis tentitis, et fiet vobis. Laus, tibi Christum. On this, the feast of Saint Peter of Verona, Marta. The epistle is taken from the second letter of Saint Paul the Apostle to St. Timothy at Ephesus. Beloved, fix thy mind on Jesus Christ, sprung from the race of David, who has risen from the dead. That is the gospel I preach, and in its service I suffer hardship like a criminal, yes, even imprisonment. But there is no imprisoning the word of God. For its sake I am ready to undergo anything, for love of the elect that they, like us, may win salvation in Jesus Christ and eternal glory with it. For thou hast closely followed the schooling, the guidance thou hast from me, 
in firm resolve, in faith, in patience, in love, in endurance, all my persecutions and suffering, such as those which befell me at Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra, what persecutions I underwent. And yet the Lord brought me through them safely. And indeed, all those who are resolved to live a holy life in Christ Jesus will meet with persecution. And the Holy Gospel is a continuation of that according to St. John. At this time, Jesus told his disciples, I am the true vine, and it is my Father who tends it. The branch that yields no fruit in me, he cuts away. The branch that does yield fruit, he trims clean, so that it may yield more fruit. You, through the message I have preached to you, are clean already. You have only to live on in, my, in me, and I will live on in you. The branch that does not live on in the vine can yield no fruit of itself. No more can you, if you do not live on in me. I am the vine, you are its branches. If a man lives on in me and I in him, then he will yield abundant fruit. Separated from me, you have no power to do anything. If a man does not live on in me, he can only be like the branch that is cast off and withers away. Such a branch is picked up and thrown into the fire to burn there. As long as you live on in me and my words live on in you, you will be able to make what request you will and have it granted. Come, Mary, for the grace of the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Carissimi, beloved in Christ, welcome to this broadcast mass. As we said on this, the Feast of St. Peter of Verona. And of course, we continue to commemorate the octave of St. George, patron of England. St. Peter of Verona uh, was born to an heretical uh, family. That is to say uh, that... Uh, uh, in the early uh, 13th century in northern Italy, uh, the, uh, remember at that time, uh, Italy was not one country as we think of it today, but was a variety of independent states. Uh, and up there uh, in the north, uh, the states had been given to uh, the heresy of the Cathars and a form of Manichaeism. Now, Manichaeism, you may recall, was uh, uh, the... Uh, heresy that St. Augustine of Hippo uh, originally followed as a young man, having renounced uh, his Christian faith that he inherited from his mother as a, as a child uh, when he went off to study rhetoric uh, in uh, um, uh, Alexandria and uh, in Greece. Uh, when he returned, uh, he had become a Manichaeist or a Manichaean. Uh, these were people who uh, believed in a kind of world of um, lights and, and shadows, uh, and uh, who thought that all um, that, that, that creation itself was uh, evil, was possessed of evil. Um, it, it was a uh, corruption, really, as a, or an extreme form, we might say, of, of um, original sin, I suppose. Um, a very strange uh, sort of um, heresy. But um, it took root. Um, and uh, one, of the, one of the reasons, of course, that it did was that it denied uh, essentially the divinity uh, of Christ. It had a very strange concept of uh, God. Um, uh, it suggested a difference, for example, between the God of the New Testament and the Old Testament. Um, it was a, a bizarre thing. But anyway, it caught imagination, as often these things do. Uh, anything that's new, anything that's different. Remember the other epistle from St. Paul to Timothy that we usually read on the Feast of Doctors of the Church. Uh, people have itching ears and all are, are always willing uh, to hear whims and fancies and fables rather than the hard objective truth. Uh, and so it was with those who were given over to the heresy of the Cathars and the Manichaeans. But divine providence, uh, of course, willed that uh, this young man uh, should, uh, despite uh, his uh, accident of birth, uh, discover and realise the faith for himself. Uh, he was taught, uh, he was sent by his parents uh, to a monastic school. Uh, his uh, father and his uncle indeed, believing that um, any, uh, anything contrary to what they believed as, as Manichaeus, uh, could, they could alter uh, in the young boy. Uh, but much to their chagrin, uh, he came back a full Catholic, um, believing wholeheartedly uh, the creed, which he recited uh, to his uh, father, much to his father's chagrin. Um, and this uh, recitation of the symbol of our faith, of the creed, 
uh, would play a significant role later in his life too. Uh, he uh, joined then the very new uh, Order of Preachers, uh, recently uh, founded, of course, by uh, uh, St. Dominic uh, de Guzman, uh, and uh, he was uh, received into that order in 1221 at the tender age of 15. At the tender age of 15, he was received into the religious life, and he soon proved himself um, a uh, true uh, adherent and expositor uh, of the charism and the spirituality of the Dominicans. Uh, after, of course, the, the requisite studies, uh, he became uh, a uh, confessor and preacher. And as was the charism of the uh, Dominicans, went about uh, preaching uh, the gospel. And in particular, of course, preaching the gospel of truth uh, to those in the country, in the region, uh, who, had, uh, other, who had been persuaded uh, to heresy and to the false beliefs and interpretations of the Cathars and the Manichaeans. So uh, he became noted um, as a great orator, as a great preacher, mostly because of the testimony of his own life, in other words, by the way in which he lived his life as a true and devout Catholic Christian. His piety was uh, unbelievable. Um, indeed, uh, when he, uh, uh, the zeal and the fervour that he had uh, for the religious life and for the charism and spirituality of the Dominicans uh, was second to none. Um, and likewise, the zeal with which he preached the gospel of peace and truth. So people were persuaded not just by his preaching, but also too by his manner of life, by his way of living. He lived what he preached. He lived what he preached. He was faithful to that instruction that had been given to him at his priestly ordination by the ordaining bishop, to live what you teach, to live what you preach. But as also too, his preaching was very effective. Uh, uh, he was uh, blessed uh, by God to be given uh, such erudition that he was able to explain the truth, explain the truth in comparison to the lie of the heresies uh, that abounded, and thus became uh, a very successful uh, converter uh, of heretics back to the true Orthodox and Catholic faith. For this, of course, he drew the ire of uh, those uh, who were uh, against uh, the faith. And eventually uh, he was uh, martyred. He was martyred by uh, vagabonds uh, on the road, um, by um, Cathars, who indeed, actually, uh, one of them uh, became converted uh, by witnessing the way in which uh, the young uh, priest died, um, reciting the creed on his lips as his breath expired. He was struck down, incidentally, by an axe and stabbed with a knife. And he wrote on the ground in his own blood the word credo, of course, the beginning of the creed. How many of us, my brothers and sisters, how many of us have such fervour, such zeal, such love for Jesus Christ and for the truth of his gospel that we will allow ourselves, as we reflected the other day, allow ourselves to accept the promptings of the Holy Spirit and speak truth, speak truth to every situation, to every discussion, into every conversation that comes up about faith, about spirituality, about the reason for life and the purpose of our existence. How many of us are so convinced by the truth of the gospel and of the Orthodox Catholic faith that we will share and correct the misunderstandings and misinterpretations and often the ignorance that other Christians have, let alone non-Christians, non-believers, but of other Christians. How many of us will recognise and seize the opportunities when they are presented to us to correct that misunderstanding that so often Protestants have concerning the Catholic and Apostolic faith? Only today I had opportunity uh, to correct 
uh, a Protestant acquaintance uh, who on his Facebook had uh, made some comment about uh, empty uh, ritual. Uh, and then in answer to a question mark left by uh, another commentator, he replied by saying uh, that uh, he was referring to um, Jesus's, um, of course, uh, condemnation of the scribes and the Pharisees for their empty ritual. And thus, uh, he had nothing to do with ritual. To which then I felt compelled to respond and say, but that's not what Christ said. That's not what Christ meant. What Christ was criticising the Pharisees and the scribes for was for their empty observance of ritual, meaning without their heart and mind united to the religious observance that they were performing. In other words, their religious observance, their ritual, which, remember, was commanded by God, was devoid of any meaning or purpose because their hearts and their minds were not engaged with it. Yes, they were going through then the empty process because their heart and mind, their, their love was not in their ritual observance. And I quoted Christ who said himself, I have not come, I have not come to displace the law and the prophets. I have not come to displace the law of Moses and dismiss the teachings of the prophets. Rather, I have come to fulfil them. I have come to bring them to perfection. And I made the point of saying, remember that Jesus himself observed all the ritual practices and observances required by the Old Testament, by the Old Covenant law with God. He himself went to the Sabbath every, uh, went to the synagogue every Sabbath. He himself went to the temple at those yearly feasts and commemorations as required. No doubt he would have offered the sacrifices with his apostles, and as we know he did when he was a child with his family. Remember the two sparrows that were sacrificed uh, when he was presented in the temple. Remember how he uh, was himself circumcised. Remember how he too had, a, he would have had a bar mitzvah. He observed all the ritual and observances required uh, by God as revealed in Scripture in the Old Testament as the terms of the covenanted relationship between God and the Israelites. But the point is that Christ observed them, of course, with love. He observed them with a genuine spirit of loving sacrifice in adoration and worship of his heavenly father and it is that which of course his teaching his his uh, condemnation regarding the hypocrisy of uh, the scribes and the pharisees and their empty ritual you see he wasn't he wasn't criticizing the ritual he wasn't criticizing the observances he was criticizing their lack of love and faith in them And that's something, my brothers and sisters, we have to be careful of as Orthodox Catholic Christians. Now, of course, I went on then to explain why, uh, in response, actually, to the suggestion that, uh, uh, therefore, Christians don't have, shouldn't observe rituals and etc., etc. So I had to make the point, well, actually, it's not the rituals that are the problem, it's the intention behind them, or the intention that should be with them. And I had to go on to say that with regard to uh, the liturgy, as we know it, of course, is that it is designed purposefully to enable the whole of the being, the whole of our being, body, mind and spirit, to worship God. By appealing to, drawing the attention and harnessing of our sensory perceptions of sight, sound, smell, taste, of how the vestments, how the art, how the, uh, uh, the beautiful works of art, the beautiful music that has been composed, uh, the beautiful architecture, the beautiful paintings, the beautiful statues, all these things have been created, A, to give glory to God, and B, speak to us of God. You can't look at a, a, at a crucifix 
and not see Jesus, can you? That's you see God. What's more, you see the manifestation of God's love in Jesus upon the cross. You can't look at a statue of a saint and not think of God, because the reason why that, per why that saint is a saint is because of their pursuit of holiness to be with God. You can't bless yourself with holy water without remembering that it is holy water and that it is a blessing that you give yourself when you use it. In all these things, these things are not empty. How can they be empty? How, how can they be a distraction, which was the charge, from focusing on God? When everything about them, the only reason why they exist is because of God. And I said, it's much easier. I find it, I said, I can only speak from experience, personal experience. I said, I find it much easier to be able to worship and focus on God with all that extrasensory perception and sensory perception harnessed and engaged in worship than I do in sitting in an empty box watching uh, a band of musicians uh, and uh, other people. My attention then becomes on them. When somebody is standing at the front, gesticulating to me like I am to you now, your attention right now is on me. Not on, not on the altar, not on the cross, not on the paschal candle behind me, unless you're watching in case I hit it. <coughs> <coughs> when I'm preaching to you and turned to you, your attention is on me. But as soon as I turn to the altar, and you can no longer see my face, but you can see the back of my vestments, and see the, and see the, the emblems and the symbols of the passion and love of God uh, uh, beautifully embroidered on them, your attention and your focus then is drawn away from me, and of course becomes focused on the cross, becomes focused on the altar, becomes focused on the symbolic and figurative representation of Calvary, it's important my brothers and sisters for us as orthodox catholics to be able to explain these things to others and we should not shy away from the responsibility to do so because so often people are just ignorant they just don't know some of course are willful some of them are deliberate in their obstinacy in their, their refusal to accept or hear or to recognize the truth but many are just ignorant they just don't know because it's not been in the realm of their experience. But that doesn't mean to say that they can't appreciate it or understand it if you explain it to them. Which of course is what happens to us as children who are brought up in the faith, what happens to us as adults who convert to the faith. We go through catechesis and in catechesis all these things are explained to us. So that we can observe them and appreciate them and use them with knowledge and apply the right intention and our hearts and our minds with them and engage with them and use them as the tools that they are to speak to us of God, to remind us of God, to direct us to God and to the purpose of our lives in the pursuit of holiness to be with him for eternity. So if you would seek to venerate uh, today's saint to venerate his memory to venerate his testimony then seek to do like him seek to take it upon yourself a to know your faith to know the catholic faith to know why we do what we do why we say what we say why we pray what we pray why we have uh, the art and the and the music and the and the vestments and everything else in our churches if you don't know find out so that you can then explain to others why we do what we do. Explain to them the truth about our faith. And of course this is not reserved, this is not solely about uh, ritual and about uh, uh, decorations. But goes deeper of course to the central tenets of our faith as Orthodox Catholics regarding that apostolic legacy 
that continues with us in the church today about the power of the Holy Spirit entrusted to the apostles and to their successors about the transformative powers uh, of the sacraments and how they manifest the incarnational understanding we have of our faith which is all about reconciling uh, the spirit and the flesh not about separating them like the Manichaeus and the Cathars uh, sought to do. My brothers and sisters, as I said the other day, when you feel the prompting and the uh, when you feel the prompting of the Holy Spirit, you have a split second to either trust in God. And follow that prompting or not. And you know, it's just the same with sin. You know what I say about sin? We have a moment to choose, to decide whether to act selfishly or selflessly. Acting selfishly is always sinful. Acting selflessly is always sacrificial love. The same is true of the promptings of the Holy Spirit. We either go with or we don't. And while, my brothers and sisters, you are waiting for those promptings of the Spirit, use that time gainfully employed in studying the faith, in studying the scriptures, in studying the liturgy. Don't leave it all to me. Don't leave it all to the clergy. Don't leave it all to the religious, to the nuns and monks. These things are for all of us. We all of us should have an understanding. Remembering, of course, what the chief of the apostles said, be ye always prepared to give an account for that hope which is in you. Let us, my brothers and sisters, so strive to be able to give an account of that hope which is ours by virtue of our Orthodox and Catholic faith. And if we really love, if we really love those we know who are not yet convinced or who are just simply ignorant, if we truly love them and truly desire their salvation, we should respond to those promptings of the Spirit to share with them the fullness of our knowledge and understanding of the faith that saves. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dominus Vobiscum, et cum spirito tuo, orde vos. Habile puntur, celi maravilia tua domine, et veritatem tuum in ecclesia sanctorum. Alleluia, alleluia. Amen. Mm -hmm.
secula seculorum. Amen. Dominus vobiscum et cum spirito tuo, sosum corda, habemus a Dominum, gracias a Gabus Domino Deo nostro. Dignum et justum est, et vere dignum et justum est, ecum, vere dignum et justum est salutare, et equidem Domini omni tempore, sed in hoc ultissimum glorioscius predicare, cum pasca nostri memoratus est Christus, ipsa iad in verus et alvus, cui abstuli peccatum mundi, cui motem nostrum oriendo distruzzi, de vitam e surgendo reparabi, Et de Deo cum angelis et archangelis, cum suolis et dominationibus, cum quae omni unis et celestis exequitus, in nomi gloria et tuae canimus in et fine vicente. Sanctus, 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 Dominus Deus, Sameonta, plenis un celi et terra gloria tua, Hosanna in excelsis. Benedictus tui venit in nomine Domini. Hosanna in excelsis.
Não abres logo para dar a Ornomia secula seculorum ad ordem precepti salutaricus non et ite vens fortione formati avemus dice. Pater nostre qui et in cieli sanctificum nomen tuum, armenia dregum tuum, fecum lontas tua, sicut in cielo et in terra. Pane nostrum quadriante nobis omine, dimita nobis debita nostra, sit nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem, de libra nostra mal. Terra mia secula seculorum. Amen. Ace Domini sit sempero vobiscum, et cum spirito tuo. Anius Dei, qui cadet peccato mundi in miserere nomis. Anius Dei, qui cadet peccato mundi in miserere nomis. Anius Dei, qui cadet peccato mundi dona nobis pace.
ecce agnus dei, ecce qui tolit peccato mundi. Domine, nam sum dignus ut in te su tecum meum, setentum dig verbo et senabitur anima mea. Domine, nam sum dignus ut in te su tecum meum, setentum dig verbo et senabitur anima mea. Domine, non sum dignus ut in resu tecum meum, se tantum dig vembo et sen nabitur anima mea. Brothers and sisters, watching Mass online and unable therefore to receive the Blessed Sacrament, we invite you now to make an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that thou art present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love thee above all things, and I desire thee in my soul. Since I cannot now receive thee sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though thou wert already there, I embrace thee and unite myself wholly to thee. Permit not that I should ever be separated from thee. Amen.
cui giusto si indovino e serra Pitineo, e non da punto romnis vecchi corde. Alleluia, alleluia. Domino suaviscum et cum spirito tuo. Orremus. Fidele est tuos domine custodian sacramenta quaesum sinus, et intercedente beato petro matire tuo, contra omnis et versus tuantur in cursus. Tuantur in cursus, per domino nostrum iaetum Christum filium tuum, e te cum vivitaremi ad unenetatis Spiritus Sancti Deus, Per non mi assicura seculorum, ad ordemus. Supplice te rogamos omnipotens Deus, ut quos tuis refici sacramentis, et ascendente beato Diodio matire tuo, tibi etziam placitis moribus dinante tribio astetevile. Per domino nostro mi hai suffris con filio tu, e te cum vi udaregna ad un'eretatis suito sancti Deus. Per non mi assicura seculorum, Amen. Nomino suo viscum et cum spirito tuo, ite misa est, Deo gratias. In nomi domini benedictum ex un lungo tuus quen secula, ut ori nostrum in nomi domini tu feci celum et terram, benedicat vos omnipotent Deus, Pate, et Filius, et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen. Nominus suaviscum, et cum Spirito tuo, initium Sancti Vangelii, secundum Giovannem, Gloria tibi Domine. In principio, ora et verbum, et verbum, ora et capo Deum, et Deus, ora et verbum, hocerat in principio a tu Deum, omne principum facta sum, et simso factus nirgo factum est. In iso vita erat, in vita erat, lus homini, ma lus in terra, per tu, per terra, per non comprehenderum. Quei tu mobis sus leda fondo, ma non ha ci guardem. Se in venite testum ovi mut, testum ovi vedere tu lumine, et omnes presum tu lum. Non è mitum in lux, se non testum ovi vedere tu lumine. Ere plus vere qua lumine, et omnem homine, ma niente nel bum mundo. In mundo erat, mundo sul sum factus est, mundo sul non cognomi, che proprio i venici sul non luciperum. Qual cor autem luciperum, tem des forestatum filius et fierici, qui trenti nomine eis. Qui non sanguinibus nex volontati panis, nex volontati viris, se rexernati sunt. Et verbum carvo factum eis, et habitabit in nomis et vinimus gloria meus, gloria et vodium genetia a patria, et donum gratia et veritatis. Neo gratia. Blessed are all among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. How many for the grace of the Lord is with thee, blessed are all among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. How many for the grace of the Lord is with thee, blessed are all among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, hail our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor vanished children of thee. To thee do we send up our sigh, mourning and weeping in this veil of tears. Turn thy most gracious hand to put thine eyes of mercy toward us, and after this our exile will show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O God, who art our refuge and our strength, look down in mercy on thy people who cry to thee, and by the intercession of the glorious and blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, of St. Joseph, her spouse, of thy blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and of all thy saints, in mercy and goodness hear our prayers for the conversion of sinners, and for the liberty and exaltation of our Holy Mother, the Church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy Michael, Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust down to hell Satan and all Satan and all his and all his wicked spirits. 
who wander through the world from the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy upon us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy upon us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy upon us. May St. Peter of Verona, Martyr, pray for us. May St. George, Patron of England, pray for us. St. Catherine of Stenning, pray for us. St. Wilfred of York, pray for us. St. Richard of Chichester, pray for us. St. Louis of Alfriston, pray for us. Our Lady of Walsingham, pray for us. Our Holy Guardian Angels, pray for us. Our Heavenly Patron Saints, pray for us. Our Lady Queen of Heaven, all the angels and saints, pray for us. Mm -hmm.